So let me ask you a question. Who who won this dance? Who 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 won? And 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 really I I asked the wrong question. See, because the last thing you want to do when you're playing with someone is to feel like you are in competition with them when you are playing together. It's synergy that's important. So really the question is wrong. And so what I want to do is I want to poll you guys. I want you to answer this question here. Okay, tell me, and you can you can rewind the video to try to figure this out, but who do you think was leading the interaction? Because anytime two people are playing together, you do have one person who needs to be in the lead. Okay, so we're going to have a poll here, and hopefully you'll see something pop across the screen. Uh, press that and tell me, do you think do you think it was Corey that was leading the interaction um, between these two, and then Nick was following, or do you think that Nick was leading uh, the interaction and Corey was following? Okay, so while you're answering that question, go ahead and uh, go ahead and give me your vote. And then what I want to do is talk about space, the concept of space. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna share the share the notes with you. The the space. The reason why I want to bring up this concept of space is because, you know, musical ability isn't always determined by you know how fast you can do and how much you can do. It, actually, a lot of times it's determined by what you don't play, what you could do, but don't. Right. So this concept of space is very important um, for the musician because you want to always develop a sense of space. And room, and I love the way Corey does that. And in fact, in in in, let me show you. There was a part in the song here where he um. Now watch this part. See, Corey's doing real basic stuff here. He's giving a lot of what I call space, right? Allowing allowing Nick allowing Nick to to kind of get some chordal changes there and some voicings that aren't gonna step in the way you understand what i'm saying so that's what i call space but what i want to do is let's let's um go back to that question of who was leading the interaction i i believe the that um that it was nick that was leading the interaction of course you can uh sound off in the comments if you don't think that's uh, that i was correct about that but I really think that it was Nick leading the inter interaction. Let me tell you the first reason I think that. Number one, Nick is already playing this song. Check this out. Here he is playing the exact same song. So this is a song that Nick has been practicing, see? And a lot of it is very similar. So <laughs> there we have it. Uh, I think we need no other evidence that this is Nick's song, okay? And Corey is joining Nick's song. He's not, Corey is not trying to be the star. They're both equally skilled here. But but it's clearly Nick, simply by, number one, by the fact that he is setting a sense of the rhythm and timing, and, and Corey is, is following him because he is practiced, so he, and you can see, you can actually almost tell um, he has a little bit more more movements, but that's because it's probably you know his song. <laughs> okay, Corey is joining him, so Corey is not stepping on his voicings by giving um, you know giving him space to work. All right, so let's go through some of these notes and uh, and go from there. Right now, because I'm doing a tutorial. Right there. All right. That is a pentatonic scale, a C pentatonic scale. So the notes would just be up. But honestly, if I was playing this for practice, I would I wouldn't be you know I would get it slow because accuracy is more important than speed. Remember that accuracy is always going to be more important than speed. All right. So, so I want you to listen to what what happens there. So, Nick has an incredible sense of timing. Very good sense of timing. Um, how he incorporates all of this within the groove without breaking his groove. 
and it's a very very important technique um, that he's using it's even more important than trying to go out of pocket and do fancy stuff he's really just trying to keep the sense of timing and rhythm here See? Dun, dun. so I'm gonna do that slow okay so that's what he's doing so <coughs> dun. I'm gonna do the minor walk up Right? And then while he's doing that, he immediately comes in with the left hand, starting on that F, walk that up, half step, half step to the G sharp, and then you have that E seventh uh, sharp five there, and then an the E uh, an A nine chord there. All right, so that's how we did that. All right, let's go on. Here is okay. <laughs> MIDI files are very interpretive, although they are supposed to be exact. Sometimes, like I said, I kind of play what I'm hearing. So, so uh, I, what I would I would go with, and I'm gonna I'm gonna test my MIDI file to see if this is right. But what I would go with here is that's how I would voice that. Let's see if that's right. Duh. Um, yep, inverted D flat chord with an E in the bottom, with an E on the bottom. All right, let's see that again. So, yeah, good. I, I want that note kind of prominent because that's the, that's the defining tone, although it seems like it should be the F sharp, which is probably right there. Okay. And then, of course, that, that chord would just be a, all right, A13. So I would prefer to use look at this as being a, a G major 7. He's just using a G major 7 chord with an A on the bottom. Okay? So it'll be, all right, so let's take all these notes again. All right, and then the second one. third one now what is this substituting though um, normally let's play it so you can hear it because this is an actual um, substitution okay so um, let me tell you what normally would be done so you can kind of hear where you would use this right most people would go something like this Right, that's how they would do it. Or, you know. So, kind of like a minor. An A minor 9 sound. Okay, so um, so that's what he would normally be. And some people like to use a tritone sound. You know. And then. Something like that, maybe. All right, but look at look at how, and that's a very popular progression. Okay, but listen to how he's voicing that. It's a seven seven three six, right? One two three four five six seven three six. But his voicing is is, is a major sound. So instead of going instead of going with a minor sound here, you know, and then maybe a seventh there, and then another minor, he's going with a major sound, still keeping that B in the bottom. And then here, a major sound again, so major, major, and then instead of going here, he's going, okay, which is essentially trading off, you can look at it as, as him trading off um, uh, minors for major chords while still keeping the bass intact, which, which, which you know, Corey... Corey likes that because look at, you know, when he gets there, yeah, see that? <laughs> Corey, Corey likes when he gets to that part um, because that, that last that last chord was a nice, a very nice change, but it was a very... And, and, and Corey, very quick on his feet here, has to, he, he just slides up, 
right? Because it was an unexpected change. So he, you know, is very proficient, gets off the organ on when he's on that chord and just slides up to continue the thing so that he's not clashing, that his chords aren't clashing with that, with that, um, you know, with that G flat, uh, not G flat, with the G major seven chord. See? Stop playing slide, right? Nice. Right, let's go on. Ah, now this is a really crazy part of the song. When you really look at what's going on here, let's. I want you to look at this again, and and what do you observe here? What's going on? Here? Okay, so why? What's going on? Why did Corey? Why did Corey make that face? Let me tell you what's going on here. All right, let me. I want you to go into it so you can hear. What's going on. Okay, okay, and then you, you see a little slip up from Corey there, and that's perfect. I love when that happens because it, it makes it makes us human, it makes it kind of just makes the play more real, in my opinion. Um, but here's here's what's going on. Nick is walking down. He's doing a typical walk down, you know. So that that's what he is doing. We're in the key of C. Okay, so since we're in the key of C, a typical walk down uh, of this nature where he's really just doing inverted major chords would sound like this. Um, like that, right? No, no sharps, no flats. But look at what he's doing, though. Dun. Okay, so right there. Okay, so, and, and I want you to watch as I go down and see what's going on. E, dun, D, C, B, A, G sharp. Wait a minute, that's not in the C progression. Oh, F sharp? So what's going on here? So let me explain it. He's going down. And then when he gets here, when he gets to the A minor, instead of hitting a G like this, he's going, he's doing that. And then, and then, um, then let me see what this note is here. Okay, so it's it's almost as if he's changing to the key of E in a sense. Um, and and what's interesting is that Corey, who was in the middle of a C major pentatonic run at the time, okay. Now look at the organ. Right, Corey. Corey's happy because he knows what's going on. He knows that he's playing a C major walk down. But look at this. Um, right here, right here. This is where he changes to that E minor sound. Watch. Well, let me scrub through this and show you what happens. Watch, watch Corey's face when we get right here. Okay, he's doing a walk down. He's doing his run. Soon as he hits, soon. Look, look. He's happy. He's happy right there because he knows what's going on. Soon as he hits that E major, then Corey <laughs> realizes that his C major pentatonic scale isn't going to work. So that that's what's going on here. Now let's look. Look at this. I want to I want to discuss the notes that he's doing. Okay, so now Corey has to adapt and change the run that he's doing as well. So let's look at that. All right, so and and when you again when you observe the synergy between them and what's actually going on behind the scenes, this this just it's it's like gold. It's going to tell you so much. Okay, so now he's having to change. What did he change to? What are the notes that he used when he changed? So here they are. And uh, let me see if I can put this back on the organ. 
Well, okay, I think I'll stop there. So um, hopefully you found this uh, valuable to you. If you did, let me know. Um, share. Don't forget to share the video uh, if you can. And uh, like, subscribe if, if you haven't subscribed yet. Um, I, I, I rely on your feedback and your comments. And I have really appreciated the support and the emails. But I rely on that feedback and comment to help me know um, what direction um, we need to take as far as making this channel something that... Um, that is really valuable for you and worth it for you to come in and view this so i, I really i really um do value your comments so i do thank you for that and um so if this video has helped you please let me know and um i think will be it I, I think we have some details about the media file in the description area so if you're trying to get the whole video or if you want the media file just kind of look in the description area and you'll have more information there okay Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, we'll see you later.